Linda, welcome to the C-Suite at the Open show. It is such a pleasure to have you join us today. Thanks so much. It's a real pleasure to be here. Now, Linamar just released its fourth quarter results with some exceptional earnings. And so I just want to congratulate you on that performance. But what can you tell us about some of the key initiatives that contributed to that success? Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, we were really pleased with the results. Um, I would say a few key things that uh, contributed to both the strong earnings performance as well as the strong cash flow. So first was our auto business was uh, really performing strongly, obviously bouncing way back from uh, where we were earlier in the year when we were shut down, um, but also thanks to a lot of launching business, uh, which helped us grow substantially over prior year as well. So that, that was great. Uh, in addition, lots of cost control measures, cash control measures that had been implemented earlier in the year were still paying off for us uh, at the back half of the year as well. So all of that really contributed towards us having a, a very strong quarter. We were really pleased. That's excellent. Uh, in November of last year, National Bank focused on the outperformance of family controlled businesses. And in the report, you mentioned that part of having a vision is setting ambitious goals. Um, what are some of the goals that you've set for yourself in your career as CEO of Linamar? Have you achieved all of them? Yeah, I would say that definitely uh, an important part in a business's success is setting aspirational goals. And I do think that that's something you tend to see more often in family-based businesses. I think partially because they tend to think a little more long-term uh, in their focus and also, and therefore set, uh, set these longer term aspirational uh, goals, uh, which I, I do think is a key element in helping to establish global growth and growth at a different uh, scale. So whether you set those goals in terms of revenue targets, or maybe in terms of how you define your product market, I think, it, uh, how you set the goals sort of forces you to think differently strategically uh, about your business. So as an example, when, when my dad set a goal uh, for Linamar way back uh, in, uh, in the 80s of being a billion dollar company, uh, at the time you know, he was doing most of his work was uh, here in, in Canada and he realized to hit a billion dollars, you know, I've got to look beyond my borders, I've got to look at, at North America. Uh, and we did achieve that goal uh, way back in 2000, which was just about when uh, I started into corporate level responsibilities, first as COO and then president and then CEO. Uh, and I set my own goal of being $10 billion uh, in sales at that time. Uh, and I realized that we weren't get, going to get there just being based in North America or just being based in automotive. So that mm -hmm. set us on a track for a more global a viewpoint for our business, a global target, global markets, expanding our business more so internationally, and also diversifying our business out of automotive and into new uh, fields, industrial fields, for instance, which is how we ended up with our, our Skyjack and Macton businesses. So goals are just something that uh, sort of give you something to focus on in the future, although that's important. It also really helps you define a bigger uh, and, and more diverse market. Yeah, and, and you've been so successful in, in, in reaching those milestones and those goals. So, so just a huge congratulations. I mean, um, you've, you've received the Order of Canada. You're a member of the Canadian Business Hall of Fame, EY Entrepreneur of the Year, CEO of the Year. Um, on top of all of the corporate um, goals that you've just referenced. So just uh, again, huge congratulations in, in setting those big goals and, and surpassing them and um, you know taking that baton and, and running with it from a family perspective. So kudos to you. In, in the month of March, we celebrate International Women's Day. Um, no surprise, I'm sure. And in uh, UN Women is placing an emphasis on how women are navigating the global pandemic. And they're highlighting the disproportionate ways that women are, um, the burden that women are carrying. 
um, during this pandemic. Can you maybe share a little bit about what Linamar has done um, to help its employees through this challenging time, but also specifically female employees in terms of how they're navigating um, the realities of the pandemic? Yeah, obviously we need to be more flexible in this time frame with our employees, male or female, but uh, as you point out, uh, you know, some of our female employees have uh, added uh, challenges when it comes to trying to balance uh, things going on at home and not having the normal sort of school and daycare uh, system network that they're used to. So, uh, you know, we need to be flexible. Uh, we need to support our workforce. This is our talent. This is how we get results. So it's really important to, to support uh, the workforce in that regard, uh, you know, recognizing it's no small challenge having small, you know, school aged children around when you're trying to work, uh, work from home and trying to balance that out as best you can. So I think what you need to do is provide support, um, provide flexibility in recognition that, you know, these challenges have been uh, an issue for the last 12 months and probably will be uh, in the coming months uh, as well. Uh, so I think it'll be really interesting as we transition into this sort of post pandemic period and back into kind of a more normal uh, operating rhythm, what things are going to look like in terms of uh, in terms of that work and work from home. And it'll be interesting to see who wants to continue to work from home and who wants to come back to the office and how different companies are approaching that. I mean, from our perspective, we've always been big believers in being together. I feel like we achieve a lot more when we're together. I think we're more aligned as a team. I think we're more creative and innovative because I feel like a lot of creativity and innovation really drives from those informal interactions. So, you know, we definitely prefer to be together and are looking forward to welcoming everybody back, uh, back on site. But at the same time, I think that we've learned uh, that uh, that we can be more flexible, that maybe there are employees, maybe women, maybe men, who uh, would prefer uh, or need to work from home for some reason, for some personal reason perhaps, or maybe it's a geographic reason where they are and where they need to be. And that, you know, that we've, we've seen that there's all these tools that can uh, be utilized to make that work. Uh, so I think that's to me, a key lesson out of the last 12 months is we can be more flexible, we can use these tools, uh, and we can figure out what's the best working arrangement that works for everybody. Uh, for sure, we'd rather have everybody here, uh, but we understand if you can't be that, uh, you know, we'd rather be find a way to be flexible and support and keep the talent. Uh, so that's been a great lesson learned. Yeah, it's, it's a, a challenging time for all and how companies navigate that phase back will be interesting to see. And no doubt um, your your reaction to that will be uniquely Linamar's. And, yes. and I'm sure you'll have tremendous success. So um, thank you for sharing that perspective with us. Thank you for being with us at C-Suite at the Open. I have so many more questions I'd like to ask, but we might have to save that for another episode. Um, but thank you for being with us at C-Suite at the Open, and we hope to uh, see you again soon. Thanks very much. Been great to be here and you stay well as well.